Minus McGraw, Dan Buck sitting in, and the longest radio program I have ever hosted. Four hours is a long time, but we've got a great hour for you. The next segment, we're going to be talking about sobriety check, checkpoints. We also have Alan Craig, first-time All-Star in the Major League All-Star game next week. He'll be joining us. And we'll also be talking with Matt Holliday in the second hour. So it's going to be a Cardinal second half. But let's talk first about these sobriety checkpoints. Love them or hate them, sobriety checkpoints are just a fact of life. They're backed by state law. They're backed by Supreme Court rulings. But the tension between individual constitutional rights and a person's obligation to cooperate with law enforcement at these checkpoints has been coming under a lot of scrutiny, mainly because of a recent video that was released of a young man who uh, was in Rutherford County, Tennessee, and the Sheriff's Department was interacting with this 21-year-old driver on the 4th of July. And this was the interaction that uh, we'll play it first, and then we'll talk about it. How you doing tonight? Pretty good. Go ahead and roll your unit down for me. Uh, this is fine, sir. Do what? This is fine. That's fine? Yes, sir. Why is that fine? Because I can hear you. How old are you? He's only lowered uh, the window a short is that distance Is a required here. question to answer? Uh, yes, sir, it is. Out of 21. Stay right there for me. Yes, sir. So he's only lowered the window a very short, about a, about a three-inch area, and this is all on videotape. Right over the side, right there. Right there. Am I being detained? Pull over to the side right there. Am I being detained or Pull am I free to go? Pull over to the side right there. Okay, step on out. Am step I, out. So I'm being detained? Either pull over the other side or you can step out right here. Which do you want? Hmm. So that was the, the, the questions that began to arise. What is your legal right when you're sitting in your car but you're on a public highway? We decided to bring in our KTRS legal expert attorney at law, Scott Sherman. And Scott, uh, this really brings up all kinds of muddy, messy legal, legal, legalese because sobriety checkpoints have been, have been uh, authorized by state law. There's been Supreme Court rulings to say that they are lawful and that, that law enforcement organizations are allowed to do this. But tell me, Scott, what do you think this young man's rights were? Was uh, he was he within his rights not to lower his window all the way, to not pull over when he was told to pull over? Hi, Dan. Uh, hi, Scott. Boy, this is like legal jambalaya. There's all kinds of stuff in this dish. Mm-hmm. There's constitutional Fifth Amendment self-incrimination, Miranda stuff, Fourth Amendment search and seizure. You're absolutely right about the sobriety checkpoints. If they are done... Uh, in a way that is considered to be reasonable and fair, and they're not either arbitrary or they're they're not uh, completely uh, encompassing. So they take a certain amount of cars and they do them. It's not entrapment. You're not trying to target people. Right. For this, a- is, this has been tested even when they put a sign up that says drug checkpoint or sobriety checkpoint next mile, and then people get off the highway and the police are waiting at the exit ramp and there is no sobriety or drug checkpoint. Those have even been lawful. So when you're in your car, the sobriety checkpoint is lawful and you have a lowered reasonable expectation of privacy. That's Supreme Court constitutional law talk for the right that you have for privacy. It's lower than it is when it's in your in and around your house. Sure, because you so, own the property that you're on in your home, you don't own the road that you're sitting on. Correct? Yeah, and it's Martin Kilcoin's favorite word, curtilage. So the stuff that you would mow or inside your house, you have more privacy rights there than you do in your car. There are things called uh, implied consent laws, where just by getting a driver's license or just by getting into a vehicle, you have consented impliedly to giving some kind of uh, blood alcohol breathalyzer test mm. that you wouldn't have to do if they came and knocked on your door. So with the respect to to this gentleman named Chris Calbaugh in Tennessee, question about whether or not he was in his rights to have answered that officer's questions or done what the officer wants depends on what questions he asked and depends on the, the officer's behavior and depends on the circumstances. That's where the jambalaya comes in. Let's take the first proposition. He comes up to the sobriety check. Roll down your window. Roll down your mm-hmm. window. Now that He would, did, but he only did it four he inches. He only did it a little bit. Mm-hmm. So the question is... When the officer wanted him to roll it down more, was that a lawful order? Now, you have, and Missouri has a state law, and Tennessee has a state law, that you as a citizen have to follow a lawful order of a law enforcement officer, or you can be charged with a crime. So was it a lawful order for him to roll the window down more? Now, 
there will be people that argue both sides of it. I think that it was because that officer, by rolling the window down, he doesn't really want to be able to hear Mr. Calbaugh. He wants to be able to smell Mr. Calbaugh. Mm-hmm. And if he can roll the window down more, that officer is going to stick his head in that that vehicle, not to hear him better. He can hear him fine. It's to smell some kind of alcohol in the interior of the car, which would be probable cause then to do more than just the reasonable short detention, which is what the field sobriety and drug checkpoints do. Mm -hmm. Once they have some kind of probable cause, now they can go beyond that. Step out of your car, uh, do a field sobriety test. They can't just say, stop your car and get out. So by not following that lawful order, there's a question as to whether or not that Mr. Calbaugh violated Tennessee's law and then was subject to pull your car over, we're going to detain you, and is this suspicious behavior? Yeah, and I'm the prosecuting attorney. I say by not agreeing to lower your window creates a suspicion. Yes, and, and, and the U.S. Supreme Court has handled cases like this before where the circumstances are not specific to a an outright crime and what's reasonable suspicion what's reasonable suspicion Mm -hmm. that's where it gets amorphous it's in that law enforcement officer's discretion maybe too much discretion to determine on his experience whether someone who's drunk or up to some kind of criminal behavior may not roll their window down but then it goes to the next step which is a bunch of questions when cowboy says and it's interesting because there's a lot in that minute Mm -hmm. am i being detained Am I free to go? Those are right out of the playbook of the U.S. Supreme Court as to whether or not Miranda would attach your right to remain silent. If the officer says you are free to go or you're not being detained, well, then he's not subject to Miranda warnings and he better be careful what he says. If he says, no, you're not free to go, Calbaugh could have said, I'm invoking my right to remain silent which the U.S. Supreme Court says you can't just sit there and be silent. You actually have to say it. And so that's where the triggering mechanism happens. But all of this happens in a short period of time Mm -hmm. during a a stop. Now, my concern here is that that officer got mad at Calbaugh. Yeah, he got hot. He was hot quick. He had no evidence that Calbaugh had done anything wrong. He hadn't even taken his driver's license information yet, which Calbaugh offered to him. And he hadn't run his plates to see if he had warrants or to see if there was any indication that Calbaugh was anything other than a law-abiding citizen stopped in a field sobriety checkpoint, which you would not have the right to call the dogs on him. Mm -hmm. So by sicking the the drug dogs, that's the next thing that happens in that Mm -hmm. video, did the officer in that case, did he violate Calbaugh's constitutional rights because then Calbaugh had never admitted he was drinking He had only asked if he was free to go, which every citizen has the right to do. And his only, I guess, discretion or indiscretion was not following the officer's order Mm -hmm. to roll the window down. Did it trigger that kind of behavior? You know, and and I think to, to play the devil's advocate for the police officers, I mean, we all know the magnitude of drunk driving and they have a responsibility and a role to play in trying to get drunk drivers off the off the roads but not at the risk of violating the Constitution. That's, yeah. that's what we're talking about. Absolutely. And this is, this is sort of the, I think, where law enforcement officers and the really best ones understand this. We're not criticizing, as lawyers, mm-hmm. law enforcement, either their professionalism, their courage, or the importance of their job. It's a really important job. Cracking down on drunk driving is a really important thing. Mm-hmm. Saving people's lives on the highway is an unbelievably important thing. But the Constitution is more important than all of it. Mm -hmm. So you cannot just justify a violation of the Constitution by saying, I have a really good reason to do it. The problem is that when you leave it to the discretion of the police, every officer may have a different interpretation of what the U.S. Supreme Court, the Missouri Supreme Court, some court of appeals has on that particular facts and circumstances. When the discretion is left to the officer, it is incumbent upon the officer, I think, to keep in mind more importantly about whether how many collars they're going to get mm-hmm. or how successful this particular stop is going to be or what lives they may or may not be saving out there, to understand one more important thing. This is what a law professor of mine said police do. They are the foot soldiers of the Constitution. You're right. They are the people who are on the front lines of not just fighting crime and protecting the citizenry, but more important than that, they are the ones that have to say, you know what? 
I probably could ring this smart aleck kid up. Mm-hmm. I probably could call the drug dogs in, but I'm going to instruct Mr. Cowball and everybody else with the most discretion and I guess deference I can to the Constitution. Look, sir, you may not understand this, but I have a right to ask you to roll down your window. And if not, I'm going to arrest you and charge you with not following a lawful order, and then we may do an investigation based on that. Mm -hmm. When you just get mad and you're trained to deal with that, you may not only be embarrassing your department, as this video seems to have done, but you may also be doing something worse, which is showing other law enforcement officers, this was a very Mm -hmm. well-trained veteran, that you can that you lose your cool, and more importantly, that you don't follow the rules. It's really important. Not only that citizens know their rights, rights not to answer incriminating questions, rights not to do this, rights not to do that, but also what police officers have the right to do and not to do. You can still do your job, and you can still have the constitutional rights protected. Attorney Scott Sherman, if people want uh, your advice on this or any other topic, how do they get in touch with you? Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, you like that? Do you like that? Thank you. You're Uh, welcome. 314-649-8776. But more importantly, uh, I just thank you for the time. Awesome. Scott Scott Sherman, attorney in law, does a lot of consulting work here at KTRS and helps us get through things like this. And your advice to a DUI guy, just in closing, if you're stopped at a DUI checkpoint, how do you recommend your client handle it quickly. Well, I would say uh, uh, <laughs> be, be, be respectful, number one. Be respectful of the law enforcement officer. If you're asked questions that are incriminating, invoke your Fifth Amendment right and say, I want to talk to my attorney. Have your lawyer on your cell phone. There you go. 922 is the time at KTRS. Back with Alan Craig in just a minute.